Hi, I'm Greg Dell here with attorney Rachel Alters, and we are going to discuss a recent case against Reliance Standard, which was fortunately a victory for the claimant. Um, it wasn't a case that we handled. However, we regularly report on cases all over the country so that our claimants and potential clients can know what's going on in the industry and also just so that we're always up to date in terms of monitoring every long-term disability insurance company. So tell us a little bit about this case and why you think it was a victory for claimants nationwide. Okay, um, Greg, this was about an attorney who was a partner in a law firm. And one day she woke up with her f legs and feet were numb. She was dizzy, she couldn't think, and she ended up going to a neurologist and they really had a hard time trying to figure out what was going on with her but she couldn't perform her occupation. So Reliance approved her benefits um, after reviewing her medical records. And for 24 months, they paid her. After 24 months, they decided that she could go back to her own occupation that they determined as a sedentary occupation as they didn't find any objective proof that she couldn't do a sedentary job. The courts were not, she did an appeal, and the courts were, um, after the appeal, she filed the lawsuit, and the judge was in disagreement with Reliance's um, determination that her job was a sedentary job. Um, they were saying that, yes, being an attorney is a sedentary occupation. However, you have to consider the other aspects of what it is to practice law. You're not just sitting at a desk. You are dealing with clients. You have to use your brain. You have to go to meetings. You have to be able to do legal research. And her symptoms were not only physical, um, but they were also cognitive. So the court required Reliance to go back do more of a review with regard to her physical requirements and her cognitive abilities um, and ruled in favor of the plaintiff that her job was not just a sedentary occupation. Well, this is classic as to what we see in, mm -hmm. in every denial when it comes to sedentary is that the disability insurance companies train these claim reps to think it's just about whether or not they can sit at a desk right. for four hours or six hours or whatever the sedentary definition requires mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with your brain. Right. And so that's the fallacy of every single claim. It's like, oh, you could sit for four hours, so you should be fine, which basically means that you didn't have to go to college, you didn't have to go to law school, you don't have to be able to interact with anybody, you just have to sit there. Right. And honestly, I know it's extreme, but a brain-dead person could almost sit in a chair, but that doesn't mean they could, they could do the job. So right. um, we're seeing this all the time, and it's the classic denial. The other thing that's classic denial about this case is the change in definition. Mm -hmm from own occupation to any occupation. Well, this was a lawyer. Didn't they think it was sedentary during the own occupation anyhow? I mean, there was really no right. no difference anyhow from the own occupation to the any occupation. But it's just another example of how they always use the change of definition as another basis to try to deny the claim, of course. which we see all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you said the appeal, the appeal that was filed before the lawsuit was obviously uh, unsuccessful, Correct. yet the judge said that uh, Reliance Standards should go back and do another review of the claim. So mm -hmm. this was a remand and not an award of benefits? Correct. Okay. Can you explain what the difference is? Um, there's two different situations in a court case where a judge can rule in favor of a plaintiff and actually award past benefits and put the claimant back on claim. Um, in this situation, this did not occur. The judge, what they, what the judge did was remand the claim, which is send the claim back to Reliance, and have Reliance do an entire other review of her medical records, objective proof, to determine whether or not she was disabled with these specific qualifications, meaning cognitively, um, could she handle her job as an attorney, and then the judge. Um, and then Reliance has to make that review, and then if they determine that yes, she was. Enable, unable to do her job, they'll put her back on claim and then they will pay her back benefits. So it's a win, it's just a longer process. Do, um, do you know if this particular claimant had neuropsych testing done? It, it didn't say in, it did not say in the case, but I would assume that that's probably something that she was going to do to further provide objective proof of her claim. Okay, and that's probably going to be her number one basis for to be able to support her claim. And earlier today, um, we filmed a, vid a video regarding cognitive deficits and cognitive mm -hmm. disorders and mm -hmm. neuropsychological testing and we talked about how that is invasive in almost every single claim that a person has physical difficulties but they also have secondary cognitive defi deficits which affect their ability to process, to multitask, short-term memory balance right. what they're doing with the day, interact with other people. And so that's a very, very common thing. And it was just ironic in your case that the court said, look, you totally ignored the cognitive aspects right. of this person's limitations. Mm -hmm. So 
If you have a claim with Reliance Standard or any other long-term disability insurance company, feel free to call Rachel or any of our other disability attorneys. We will always offer you a free consultation and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.